Good morning, church. Welcome to the worship service of Belfast United Methodist Church. How are you? I hope you are all well this morning. Today we celebrate the third Sunday after Pentecost. As we celebrate this moment together, I pray that the Holy Spirit is upon you and fills you with joy and gratitude. And also, I pray that you can find peace and comfort in the midst of this time together. Now, I would like to invite you to share Christ's peace with one another. So now I say, Christ's peace be with you and also with you. Amen. And now I invite you to center yourselves for this moment to worship and praise our God. And we together sing, We gather together. So let us joyfully sing. together to ask the Lord blessing he chastened and hastened his will to make known the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing sing praises to his name he forgot his own we all do extort thee, thou leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defend the will be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation, thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Amen. Now please join me in the call to worship. O oh God, our guide and helper, we come to worship you. You stay beside us as we journey through life. O oh God, our just and holy one, we come to thank you. You lead us in your path of justice and peace. O oh God, our trusty, worthy leader, we come to praise you. We know we can always rely on your promises, O oh God. We gather to worship, praise, and thank you. Amen. And now please join me in the prayer of invocation. Christ Jesus, we come into your presence from many different places. We come with songs of joy and shouts of gratitude. We come carrying heavy burdens and sighs of suffering. As you welcome us into your house, lift our burdens and receive our praise. Salt us with your grace and flavor us with your mercy. Bind us together that we may be at peace with one another and be strengthened to go forth in service to the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. As I went down in the river to pray, singing about the good old way, and who shall wear a starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. I went down in the river to pray, 
Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the starry crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, brothers, let's go down Let's go down, come on down Oh, brothers, let's go down Down in the river to I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the sorry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, children, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, children, let's go down, down in the river. Today's scripture reading for us is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. The first one, the parable of the growing seed. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. The parable of the mustard seed. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. The use of parables. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As you know, Jesus lived his life with a perspective that was different from most of the people he met. One of the things that characterized the ministry of Jesus was his ability to see beyond ordinary appearances. We usually see people in terms of what they were in the past and what they are now. Jesus, however, viewed others not so much in terms of what they were and what they are, but in terms of what they would become as a result of the liberating power of God. An ordinary fisherman becomes the rock on which the church would be built. A dishonest tax collector becomes a trusted friend and disciple. Outsiders are invited to be leaders. The unclean are restored to fellowship. The hopelessly ill are made well again. 
an angry Pharisee who is a persecutor of the church becomes the apostle to the Gentiles. We see in the Gospels that many who heard and believed the good news from Jesus were liberated from the prison of a negative perspective and given instead a perspective of possibility through the transforming power and liberating love of God. In Christ, good things are possible not because of our own effort and ability, but because of the redemptive power of God. Because of this power from God working in us, our lives will be full of possibilities. Now my question is this, what does it mean by living with the fullness of possibilities? We believe that everything is possible in God. What does it mean in our faith journey? In my faith journey, I have struggled to figure out what it means to live with possibilities in God. I have one diary that I have kept since I was a high school student, so it's uh, more than 20 years now. Uh, there are many prayers written on the diary. Um, I wrote a lot of you know, prayers on it. And one of them was this. Don't laugh at me. Dear God, Please let me be on top of all students in college entrance examination in South Korea. Uh, are you laughing? <laughs> all right. Um, I believe that you know God can do anything. I, God could do anything for me back then. So. Uh, that was one of my um, common prayers list in my list. Back then, I was full of faith in God. I boldly prayed to God, but as you now expected, probably guessed. That didn't happen actually. Actually, I was very, very, very far from being on top of all students who took the college entrance examination. I understand now why. Because God doesn't work like that for us, right? Instead, what God is doing for us is sow seeds first. Help them grow and move forward and move toward each fruition, little by little and day by day. Several years after the boldly repeated prayer for the college entrance examination, God helped me to graduate, uh, to, uh, graduate um, from the college with the top honor. So now I see God had worked for me, right? More than that, yesterday, three years ago, so June 15 in uh, 2018, I was fully uh, I was finally ordained in the New England Conference with the support and prayer of the church and the people around me. The moment of my ordination didn't come into my life so quickly 
and easily. It had taken almost 20 years for me to be ordained since I responded to God's calling to ministry when I was a high school student. God saw a seed. God saw a seed in the heart of a teenager boy. And since then, God had helped and guided the boy to grow and grow and finally moved him toward each fruition, ordination. This is how God works in our lives. And this is what we learn from the Gospel of Mark we read this morning. Mark chapter 4 is mostly devoted to parables about seeds and planning and their relation to the kingdom of God. Mark 4 gives us hope that the reign of God is among us now, growing, living, moving toward each fruition, even if we don't know how and when. When Jesus tells his listeners that the kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed, which is one of the smallest seeds, but which becomes the greatest of all shrubs, he is actually inviting us to look at the world with new eyes and new faith in God. In this very brief parable, Jesus says, This is the way God does things. God is like a sower who scatters seeds. The seeds may be tiny, yet when the seed is planted, it grows into a shrub that provides shelter for the creatures of this world. Your faith may be no longer than, no larger than a grain of mustard seed. However, God will never stop helping us grow and move toward our amazing fruition. The winner of the Nobel Prize, Nobel Peace Prize, Mother Teresa. She began her uh, orphanage with such a vision. She told her superiors, I have three pennies and a dream from God to build an orphanage. A dream, a three pennies, represented resources as small as a mustard seed, right? Mother Teresa, her superiors, tried it gently. You cannot build an orphanage with three pennies. With three pennies, you cannot do anything. I know, she said, smiling, but with God and three pennies, I can do anything. Like Jesus, Mother Teresa, saw things in terms of what her faith and mission would become as a result of God's amazing power. Through her life, she proved that the message from the mustard seed, this parable, tells the truth for those who live with faith and in God's love and care. Now, I would like to remind you of this faith and this truth. Our church also has great potentials, right? I'm pretty sure you are on the same page with me. We have great potentials to grow. Like many other churches these days, we face many challenges such as finance and membership. However, those challenges never stop God from working for us and working with us. 
God's grace is greater than all the challenges combined. And God works for our church and also each of us day by day. This morning, through the message of the Gospel, Mark chapter 4, God invites us to see things with the eyes of Jesus Christ and also with the eyes of Mother Teresa for our church mission. And now we all together respond to the invitation as we say yes to God. Christ our Lord invites us into the moment of prayer. When we have this moment together, please lift up your prayer concerns to our God. God is listening to us and also working for us. With this faith, let us together be in the spirit of silent prayer. God of love and mercy, you have called us and all your children into one family through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. By his gracious presence, we look with new eyes at the whole human family in its brokenness and pain. We seek your strength and determination to embrace them, love them, heal them, and share with them your great good news of hope and new life. Hear us, Lord, as we lift to you our deepest needs, our pressing burdens, our fears and hopes. Be near us, we pray, as your people. Help us to receive your many gifts with gratitude and faithful stewardship. We pray for those who suffer pain all illness, for the lonely and despairing, for the lost and won and battled of our world. And we lift to you the leaders of this and every nation, community, and faith, that they would, guided by, would be guided by your spirit and aware of the needs, especially of the least of their people. Loving God and merciful God, we pray for those whose lives are closely linked to our own. We also pray for our own needs, which we offer to you in faith. To the sick, O Lord, give your healing. To the grieving, give hope. To the dying, give your peace. And to all of us, O God, give faith to go forth from this place determined to live in the light of your good news in Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we offer to you our prayers and our lives. Amen. Now let us together say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, out of gratitude for the love of God, we offer our time, talent, and treasure. As I lift up our offering to God, let us together say the prayer of dedication. Mysterious God of infinite love, this morning we offer our gifts to you 
but more than this, we offer ourselves. Use us and our gifts for your mission. We pray this in the name of Jesus, your Son, who called us into discipleship. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who honestly repent of their sins, and seek to live in peace with one another. Lift all your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You made us in your image to love and be loved. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of your only Son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the suffer was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty action, Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, and on this gift of bread and wine, make them before us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Body of Christ broken for us, and blood of Christ shed for our salvation, so let us together take both of them. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn for today's worship service is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let us together sing. Thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As Thou hast been, Thou forever will be. 
Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endures. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength through the day and bright her over morrow. Blessing soul my with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I am needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. Let us pray. May the God of peace who raised Jesus Christ from the dead strengthen your inner being for every good work. And may the blessing of God, Almighty Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and dwell within you this day and evermore. Amen.